and then we discussed about what is thermal stress and thermal strain uh, the stress is associated with due to the thermal effect the strain right, as well as well. so today we will be discussing more about strain energy and especially since we are concentrating axial loads in our previous classes we will be dealing with the specific case the strain energy developed due to the axial load uh, am i audible to you yes sir you are audible yeah, thank you uh, so like in, in our previous class we dealt with the concepts of stress and strain uh actually it is mainly the idea uh, the idea behind the means that like we are trying to find the relationship between the force and deform force and uh, the deformation happening there so strain energy is nothing but broadly we can say it is the increase in internal energy associated with the deformation of the member mm. okay so for that uh, just a second we just consider a prismatic bar Uh, of length a subjected to tensile load p so do we have any prismatic bar this uh, this this bar is having a length m and uh, it is subjected to tensile load p here and uh, this is in uh, tensile effect so there is a elongation happening at the end of this bar and this is the maximum elongation let it be delta and here we make the assumption that the load is applied slowly sir your screen is not visible sir oh okay okay sorry 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 as i was saying we have dealt with the concepts behind the stress and strain now we are today we are going to study about what is strain energy so broadly saying strain, strain energy is nothing but the increase in the internal energy associated with the deformation of the member like we are giving a force p here for example the uh, for this bar shown here we are applying a tensile load and there will be some elongation some deformation happening and uh, as a result because, uh, there will be an nf so there will be work done and this work done is stored as the internal energy and that internal energy is called the strain energy so here we are making the assumption that the load is applied slowly so that it gradually increases from uh, zero to the maximum value so when load is applied at the same time uh, there will be elongation happening and uh, we are assuming that the maximum elongation may be delta we can draw a uh, load deflection curve here so on x axis this is the elongation and on y axis the load applied so i am getting a graph like this and assuming that the maximum maybe like uh, okay the maximum def deflection is delta uh, for which the load okay not maximum like for, for the load p the deflection is delta here now Uh, now we will consider this uh, load deflection curve in more detail we will have a i will draw the figure again and now this is a load deflection curve now move on um, so uh, i will consider just a uh, axial load p1 for example like uh, let p1 be the axial load so so p1 is any value between uh, zero and capital p p is the maximum value and p1 is the uh, any value between zero and p and let delta one be the corresponding elongation here 
and now what we have to try to do here is uh, we will try to give a small increment to the k1 uh, let it be uh, okay Okay. Let, let it be d p1 and we will try to find what is the corresponding elongation part so let it be d delta 1 so this d here is the differential operator so it will be here. so an increment in this load uh, the an increment in the load causes an increment in elongation and we, we are trying to figure out what is the uh, work done due to this increment in the load. So from the engineering mechanism, we know that the constant force does work equal to the product of the force and the distance through which it moves. So similarly here, the work incremental work done will be the term given by this. dw will be p1 times uh, d delta 1 and we need to find the total work done the work. so the dw is nothing but the work done by the load during the incremental elongation incremental elongation is delta d1 here uh, sorry d delta 1 and the total work done will, will be the integral operator uh, 0 to n p1 multiplied by d delta 1 so the work done by the load is equal to the area below the load displacement curve for example like uh, so what we have to do here is the total work done can be so the maximum load i am applying is p and the maximum diffraction is coming as a delta so the total work will be the area under this area under this curve okay so uh, and now we are considering the from principle of conservation of energy we can see that the strain energy is nothing but equal to the work done by the load and we are making the assumption that there is no energy added or subtracted in the form of heat or any friction or anything so strain energy is the energy absorbed by the bar during this loading process okay so we can write the strain energy is denoted by the letter u and it is given as nothing but this work done here and uh, the, can someone tell me what will be the unit of the strain energy the joule joule yes the joule so here this one joule is nothing but one like force into distance right so force is measured in newton and uh, should we and uh, the distance is measured in meter so one joule is nothing but one newton meter so next we are having the concept of elastic and inelastic strain and energy so it is nothing but if the force we, we are saying we are having a bar and we are applying a load and there will be an elongation in the bar now what happens if that force is removed the bar will shorten so This is a load versus deflection curve. I am applying a load like this. So, so when I when I apply the load, uh, the, there is a deflection happening, and suppose this is the elastic limit, and this is some other point A. The point A is called elastic limit, and the point B some point beyond the point A. And if I am unloading at a point A here, the, within the elastic limit, then the body will come back to its original shape. But what happens if I am unloading at the point B, like the already the stress is beyond the force is applied over the elastic limit. And what happens if I am unloading at point B? At this we have discussed in the previous class. At this, if you are unloading at point B, then the body will come back to uh, the, the another shape but it will be deformed the, there will be a permanent deformation happening so it will trace back uh, a line parallel to this OA here
I'm just quoting this pointer C here. Now what we can we in the previous slide we mentioned that the area under the force displacement curve will give you the strain energy. So here we can consider uh, the area under this curve. So here uh, we will say that uh, the area under this region. Okay, we will call it C B D. Okay, the area under uh, the area denoted by C B D that is called elastic strain energy. But this is inelastic strain energy. So, what is the difference between elastic and inelastic strain energy? Elastic strain energy is the strain energy recovered during the unloading. Uh, there is a permanent, uh, yeah, okay. And elast inelastic strain energy is the strain energy that is lost in the process of permanently deforming the bar. Because when we loaded the bar from uh, point like up to point A and then we are again loading beyond the elastic limit reaching the point B here and then unloading it is reaching the point C. So whatever we can recover here the strain energy is the region under the curve, uh, the, re the area enclosed by the region BCD. So that is the elastic strain energy part and whatever comes in the OABC region that is the inelastic strain energy that is the that is permanently lost. I mean that is lost due to the deforming the bar. Sir, yeah. Sir, permanently lost means it should be the area under the curve from A to B only, no, sir. Area under the curve from uh, no, no, no. Like we are just unloading the pattern here. Uh, like okay, I will explain. We are loading from O O to A uh, from re point A. It re reaches the point A and then it reaches point B. And from point B, it is coming back to point C. Okay, so total work done will be the area under O A B D like that. This region O A B D C O. So we, in that the region B C D is coming as the uh, strain energy which is recovered. So whatever which is remaining back, that is the uh, strain energy which is lost because of the deformation. That's how we calculate. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Now uh, we will consider a linearly elastic uh, behavior. Usually, like uh, in our like in a, in a design of materials, most of the time we are focusing on the material to be in, in behavior as in, sorry. In design of materials, we try to design the materials in such a way that they behave as linearly elastic. So the main advantage is after the deformation or once the deformation is removed, the material will come back to its original shape. So how how like we are saying uh, the strain energy stored in the bar will be given by this expression half P into delta. I'll show how we are calculating it. So earlier we are we are showing it curve. Now we are Assuming it is a linear elastic behavior, so we will assume a straight line. So, for load P, um, delta is the maximum elongation. So, the area under this graph is nothing but area of this triangle, and area of the triangle is given by half into P into delta. That's what we are saying here. The strain energy stored in the bar is half into P into delta. This is only for linearly elastic uh, material. And from Hooke's law, we know that delta is given, uh, the relationship between the load and elongation of the bar is given by delta equal to PL by AE. And we can plug these two equations. And from that, we, we can write uh, strain energy in terms of the load P as well as the strain energy in terms of uh, the deflection. Of the elongation. So we will get two expression. Uh, one is u equal to PL, p square l by 2 ae and the other one is uh, ae delta square by 2a. These two are just by substituting uh, p or delta 
uh, okay if you substitute delta here we get the first one and similarly if you back substitute uh, for p then we'll get the other expression a e delta square by 2a so these two are the formulas which we need to know now i'm defining another term called strain energy density so here strain energy it is defined as the strain energy per unit volume not that the strain energy is given by the capital u the strain energy density is denoted by the small letter u and here we are making the assumption that we are dealing with a prismatic bar prismatic bar means the cross sectional area is uniform throughout so okay and uh, so the volume here will be a into l the raise the cross sectional area l is the length and in the previous night uh, okay i will just write you know okay. small u is nothing but p square l by 2 ae and for a e delta square by 2 l yeah I, actually i want to tell you one uh, another thing like um, a e is called axial rigidity sometimes uh, in some um, books or some numerical examples they will say axial rigidity is something so you, you need to understand that this is nothing but the product of cross sectional area and elastic modulus so here in this expression uh, when you from the strain energy when you divide by the volume Uh, you will get this expression u equal to p square by 2e a square this one and if you are using this expression you will get the this term e into delta square by 2l square you just need to substitute v equal to a and then you can get and then what we are trying to do here is we are just making the uh, we are using this substitution sigma equal to p by a epsilon equal to e by oh, sorry epsilon equal to delta by l then what we are getting here is u equal to sigma square by 2e here this expression similarly from this expression it will we will get u equal to e into epsilon square by 2 so what will be the unit of strain energy density joules per meter cube yes joules per meter cube uh joules per meter cube and and what is joules here joules is newton meter newton meter sir so it is meter cube we will get as newton per meter square finally okay and what what can what can you say about geometric some uh, some geometric interpretation about this strain energy per unit volume So parabolic. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not. Not I'm saying. Like I, I said, like strain energy is nothing but the area under load deflection. Uh, ah, load load deflection curve. Like we are having P here. Sorry, delta here. And if uh, the area under this load deflection curve is nothing but the strain energy. So similarly, can you say something about strain energy per unit volume by looking into this expression? Sir, so area under stress strain diagram. Yes, exactly. So how how do you get that? Sir, uh, sigma stress E is uh, strain, so sigma versus E graph. Yes. So here, sigma is. And uh, area will be a triangle. Uh, no, no. Uh, can you explain one more? How did you did that? Uh, stress versus strain diagram. Okay. Uh, Then. Sorry, it's not a triangle, but uh, the diagram is stress strain diagram. No, no. Okay. Uh, like okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether. The, uh, okay, but still. Uh, what we have to do here is we have to use the Hooke's law, sigma equal to e into epsilon, 
they substitute here in this expression u equal to sigma square by 2e so what we will get u equal to half into sigma into epsilon this expression so if you draw a curve if you draw a so from stress strain curve sigma with epsilon this is nothing but in the elastic region it will be straight line and the area under this graph is nothing but the area of this triangle half into sigma into epsilon so the geometric interpretation of strain energy density is it is the area under stress strain curve provided the material is linear to elastic okay uh, now i will explain one part of the time modulus of resilience so resilience rep represents basically the ability of the material to absorb and release energy within the elastic range so within the elastic range it can absorb as well as release energy like what means like the, the material can be loaded it will go as a malformation and when you unload it um, uh, like the deformation will become zero so material can absorb as well as re release energy so the strain energy density of the material when it is stressed to the proportional limit is called the modulus of resilience okay like just before here we have defined u equal u equal to sigma square by 2e what we are trying to do here is is this is nothing but the strain energy per unit volume only that is a strain definition of strain energy density but here the stress which we have to use is the stress corresponding to the proportionality limit like elastic limit then the strain energy density is called the modulus of resilience uh, and from the previous slide as i said as i said like uh, strain energy density is nothing but the area below the stress strain curve so modulus of resilience is nothing but the area below the stress strain curve up to the proportionality limit so what is proof resilience here proof, proof resilience is nothing but the strain energy uh, energy of the material up to the proportionality limit so we can see that modulus of resilience is nothing but the proof resilience by volume so what is proof resilience here proof resilience is the stress corresponding to the sorry is the strain energy corresponding to the uh proportionality limit or you can say that it is the proof resilience is nothing but the area below load deflection curve up to the proportionality limit similarly we can define modulus of toughness toughness is related to the ability of material to absorb energy without fracturing like here what we are trying to do here is we are loading the material beyond the elastic limit so there will be like a permanent deformation happening and we are just but uh, we are uh, loading up to the point of failure we are not allowing the material to fail so modulus of toughness is nothing but the strain energy when the material is stressed up to the point of failure so if you draw the stress strain graph uh, like up to this point it is elastic part and then it will go some more uh, it will go little, there will be some more elongation so we will try to find what is the area under this um, stress strain graph so it is equal to the entire area below the uh, sorry area below the entire stress strain curve and higher the modulus of toughness the greater the ability of the material to absorb energy without failing and then okay so till now we have considered about prismatic bars like we defined this strain energy as uh, p square l by 2 ae this we have defined from the first slide uh, i mean one of the first slide so uh, in the initial part and here we assume that p is constant like we are having a bar with a uniform cross section so the p is say coming as same uh, 
length will be same area and elastic bonds everything is same now we are considering a bar like this uh something like this and so okay okay so the area will be different length will be different the axial force acting main like can be different or may, may be same like that so in that case what you have to do here is uh, so suppose this is the internal energy developed capital u is the internal energy developed in the bar 1 u2 is the internal energy developed in the bar 2 then the total energy will be nothing but u1 plus u2 but here we are making the assumption that material is linearly elastic internal, uh, internal axial force is constant in each segment okay and we will get we can use this expression this is nothing but summation of this expression only like we are converting this expression into a summation combination now there is another case a non prismatic bar with continuously varying cross section and axial force for example like a uh, uh, like a conical shape it is subjected to p so here this a is we if we take a cross section this cross section it is not a constant it is a of x like with respect to x the cross section is changing uh, but here uh, the p the axial force acting will be same throughout so n of x will be a constant here for this case but the area of cross section will be changing and i will give another example where n of x is changing for example like we have uh, considered this example in our previous class like a prismatic bar subjected to uh, self weight or self weight of the bar then at that time the axial load will be different like if you take a small region uh, this re for example this region will be subjected to rho g a x the load acting on the small element dx so in that case we have to use this expression u equal to 0 to l uh, integral operator so if this is nothing but the original formula only where this p is interchanged with the n of x here l is uh, changed with the dx and then 2a e 2a of x 2 times a of x into e uh, so we will consider a small example like with, similar to the one which we have done before like elongation due to self weight we will consider the elongate self strain energy due to uh, self weight here so i am having a prismatic bar um here Uh, from the uh, it is subjected to no, it is not subjected to uh, external load. This is a small element dx, and on this dx, uh, okay, this is the length from the bottom. Rho is the mass density. So. In this member, the total weight acting on this member will be nothing but rho g times volume. Volume is nothing but area into length. Area into length is x here. Okay, so I can write this as n of x. The length will be n minus x. Pardon? Hello. Okay. I'm, okay. I understood your point. Like uh, I am just starting from here only. Uh, I mean, this is my no, sir. Uh, weight, the weight of the element is about the dx element, no? So the length of that element is l minus x. Uh, no, no. Like we are considering the small element here. The weight acting on this uh, part will be because of this part. The weight acting on this small element will be the weight coming from the bottom part, from zero to x region, right? Okay, sir. Yeah. So that's why I'm, uh, and and I'm my coordinate starts from the bottom also, like from the bottom point. This is given. 
and then okay so this is it right so what is the strain energy expression uh, from the previous slide we have written okay so original expression was u u equal to p square l by 2 ae and that we have modified as integral n of x all square dx by 2 ae and we just substitute this n of x into this term and we will get 0 to l okay, this is from 0 to l rho g x all square log 2 ae so what what will be the final expression uh, can someone tell me tell the answer so rho square g square Rho square G square, L cube, L cube by 6e. 6e, yes. Uh, Rho square G square, what happened to the a time? That's the a time also, right? Yes, sir. A is in the numerator. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, so here uh, I just mentioned statement. The, I just mentioned the statement here. Principle of superposition is not used for computation of strain energy. Uh, so what does that mean here? Mm. Okay, I will show that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Suppose the same bar. Is subjected to axial load here. So the, we need to consider uh, the cell fate of the bar also, and and at the same time, so the, from the previous case, this bar is subjected to an axial load, some external force here. So what will be the total strain energy? So uh, according to principle of superposition, like if if you apply a p uh, load p one, suppose if, if you are measuring a delta one as the elongation, and if you applied a load P2 and if you measure the, del, uh, the elongation is delta 2 and the next case we are applying the load P1 and P2 together then according to using the principle of superposition we can see that uh, the total deflection will be delta 1 plus delta 2 if the material is linear but similar type of uh, activity or, or the principle of superposition cannot be used for computation of strain energy like the first we have we know that uh, when we apply a load P, the strain energy is nothing but uh, P square L by 2 AE. This is due to external load. And from the previous slide, we got the strain energy due to self weight is rho square V square. Rho square B square A L cube by 6 E. So let it be U1, U2. So now we are having uh, a combined case due to self weight as well as due to the external force. So it is nothing but U1 plus U2. So how, how can we calculate it? Sir, in the integration part, we have to take the complete force, sir. P plus rho G A X. Yes, so if exactly. we take, we get an extra term 2 P into rho G A X D X. Yes, exactly. So AX plus P. Be only because of self it was rho G AX. And now we are having uh, one more 10 P here. So we will get, uh, when we do the integration, uh, then at that time there is N of X whole square. So we need to do uh, A plus B whole square that time. And then we will get an extra term. That is nothing but, uh, okay. I will write this here. Mm. Rho G AX. The whole square by 2 AE dx. So we will get one expression as u1, the same one, and then you will get u2, and there will be one more expression, and that will be rho g p l square by 2 AE. 
So that's why I said the principle of superposition is not valid uh, for the computational strain and everything. And now this is just a illustration part. I just want to uh, I, I want everyone to compute uh, the strain energy for two cases. Uh, I will draw the figure here. Yeah. So for the first case, it is simple. This nothing but uh, expression will be u uh, one is nothing but uh, a square l by a e. That is a one which we have defined already. So what will be the case for the second bar? That is a composite bar. Okay, Aditya Kiran, are you here? Aditya Kiran. I think it's not here. Amit Vikram. Yes, sir. So can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sir, please show the question. Uh, in the second part, uh, when we will uh, calculate the strain energy as principle of superposition cannot be uh, used here. Uh, in the integration part where uh, we have to get the uh, force as a function of uh, uh, the distance uh, from the below, uh, we'll be having three parts in there uh, because this uh, uh, this whole structure is made up of three parts. Uh, two are of equal, uh, two rods are equal of two L by five and one is of L by five length. And they are having different cross sections, so the integration will be broken down into three portions. Uh, in the first portion, we will be having uh, force. Uh, uh, in the in the first portion, the the most uh, the rod in the uh, below portion where the force P is applied, here the self weight of this this rod plus this force P will be added, and the limit of integration will be from zero to two L by five. And its cross sectional area will be uh, pi pi into 2d square by 4. Okay. And for the second integration, the limit will be from. Uh, 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 can you tell me the expression then? Uh, 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 so let the uh, energy stored in the lowest most portion be b u1, uh, which it is equal to integral uh, the the energy in the the force, force, yeah. First, we have to calculate the force, uh, which is uh, rho A G X. Uh, here. No, no, uh, one second. We have to this. I'm just making the assumption. This has got the weight of the bar. Uh, so, can you again uh, explain what, what you just said? Uh, just assume only consider the external force here. You don't need to consider the. Uh, Weight of the bar. Self weight, okay, okay. Without considering the self weight, uh, the external force is P for all these three rods. Uh, oh, actually, one, okay, one second. So we have to use this formula, this expression. So first one, no? Yeah, first, first one. Okay, okay. In that case, uh, if, if we are not considering the self weight, then the external load P will be uh, same for all these three rods. Yes. And in that case, uh, P, uh, the force oh. will be P. Why are we using yeah. this formula instead of the below formula, the second formula? 
so second formula uh, yeah we can also use this because uh, 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 we can break this that uh, whole uh, whole three parts into three pieces because uh, so those three pieces are uh, already given as prismatic bars yes so uh, yes because yeah they, they are having same cross sectional area for a given length like 2 uh, by 5 is having the same cross sectional area then l by 5 is having same cross sectional so cross sectional area and then the last 2 by 5 is also having the uniform cross sectional area yeah so the idea is like each segment is actually prismatic although the yeah. com composite like it is a composite bar like in where each segment is prismatic so one equation we have to like by heart or you have to always remember in this thing only this expression u equal to phase square l by 2 ae and from that according to your needs you have to either take this one or this one hmm so so here we can use the first one only yes so the u2 is nothing but uh, summation v a square l i square by a a square 2 uh, l by 5 upon uh, a a is pi into 2d whole square upon 4 into uh, e sir for the first one it's a p square into 2l by 5 upon pi 2d whole square upon 4 into e ah okay and for the second one it's p square into l by 5 upon uh, pi d square by 4 into e and for the third one it's p square 2l by 5 uh, upon pi into 2d whole square by 4 into e yeah so finally you will get that uh, spin energy so, so wait, wait, wait for yeah. one minute I'll, i'll calculate and pi So it's eight uh, uh, p square l by five d square pi e. Uh, okay, in terms. Of, so finally, what is the relationship between u two and u one? So can you? Sir, u two and u one. Yeah, I'm, no, no. I mean, uh, like, what is the ratio of u two to u one? Wait, wait, sir. I'm telling uh, four. Sir, it's it's a uh, two is two one. Like uh, u two is two times u one. No, no. It is two by five. It's not. It's a real sum. You just check it out. So u one is a two two p l square p square l upon five pi d square e. This is u one. U one is p square l by two a e. So in that a is nothing but pi d square by four. And u two, if you calculate, you will get a uh, p square l by five a e. Sir, uh, what is a pi d square by four, na? Yeah, a, a is pi d square by four. Pi d square. Uh, that's what I'm sir calculating, sir. Uh, I'm getting u one as a two p square. Sir, uh, below the diameter is two d, na? Then the four of. Sir, excuse me, sir. Uh, Yeah. Sir, excuse me. Uh, when you wrote the formula of u two summation of p square l by a e, two p should square. be multiplied in the denominator, sir. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, there is a two here. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yes. In the denominator, there is a two here. Yeah. Yes. Sir. So uh, finally, you you will get this expression p square l by phi a e, where a is nothing but uh, phi b square by four. And the ratio of u2 to u1 will be 2 by 5. Uh, actually, I am running out of time, so I think you can find okay, figure sir, out. You okay, can sir, figure out. Can like, it. it may be yeah. calculation error. Yeah, I got the concept. Be, yeah. And so, what what can you say about uh, this case? Like, for, uh, in the first big bar, uh, you calculated strain energy, and the second bar, uh, when you decrease the diameter, then what happens is like, or we can say that there is a change in the strain energy. Yes, sir. This. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I want to come. Uh, this numeric example also. I want. Uh, I want all of you to calculate. 
A tensile load of 60 kN is gradually applied to a circular bar of 4 cm diameter and 5 m long. If the value of modulus of elastic is 2 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per millimeter square, determine stretch in the row, stress in the row, strain energy absorbed. Yes, sir. Uh, stretch can be calculated uh, using the formula PL upon AE. Yeah. So, what will be the value? Uh, P is uh, 16 to 10 raised to power 3 Newton and L is 5 upon area is uh, pi into 4 into 10 raised to power minus 2 whole square upon 4 and uh, E is 2 into 10 raised to power 5 per minimum. Yes. I have to calculate using calculator. Yeah, so someone else calculated the final value, strain energy. Hello. Hello. Hello, anyone there? Yeah, so what is what is the so final value? Is, so the stretch is 1.194 millimeters. 1.194 millimeters, okay. What is the stress? Uh, can can someone tell me the final answer? Strain energy absorbed in the row. Strain energy expression is uh, p square L by 2 A. This substitute of values. So strength is 47.74 Newton per mm square. 47.74 Newton per mm square. Oh, okay, this one. 47.74 Newton per mm square. Okay. And finally, uh, strain energy. So 286.62 into 10 to the power of pi. 286.62 into 10 to the power of pi. Getting like. What is the unit? Joule mark, uh, Newton meter square. Newton meter square, I think Newton meter only. No, no, just P is nothing but this is T square. Length is 5 meter by 2. So you have to convert this into uh, no uh, no term. So it will be ten raised to three six. So final unit will be no term meter. Sorry sorry sorry. There is a problem here. This has the unit of okay. 
Amen. I'm getting confused here. So, uh, 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 how are we getting consistent results? The strain and the read. Hello. Sir, 0 0.358 joules per uh, uh, meter cube. Yeah, that is a correct answer. Even I have a final value. So it is something like uh, 35.810 kilonewton meter. The, your, your value is 0 0.358? Uh, yes, sir. 0 0.358 joules per meter cube. Joules per meter cube. No, no, you are calculating uh, strain energy density. This is yes, strain sir. this is a strain oh. strain energy only. So for this you have to calculate the, you use this formula u equal to p square l by 2 a. Okay, sir. So it comes as 35.810, I think, kilonewton meter. Uh, and finally, yeah, the one one more problem, similar type only. Okay, I will call it this name. Today I will. Okay, uh, Babida. Babida Bishkan. Are you here? Babia. Yes, sir. So the question is, uh, complete the amount of strain energy when a prismatic mild steel bar one meter long is subjected to axial load. Uh, we just find the final term. Calculate the strain energy density. Okay, can you tell me the expression for strain energy density? Sir, uh, strain energy per unit volume. Okay. And uh, uh, what is the expression for uh, strain energy? Uh, P square L by 2 AE. And volume here we can assume that is a prismatic mild steel bar. So uh, it's a bar only, so it is gained. Yeah. Uh, what is the value for P here? Sir, 50 kilonewton. And length will be? One meter long. Uh, cross sectional area? It's given already in the question. Uh, sir, we need to convert into uh, meters. Yes. So, uh, two into two into ten power minus three meters square. And then, uh, what is the, the value for e? It is saying mild steel. T. Okay. Yeah. So for mild steel, uh, you have to assume e equal to Q into 10 to the power of power, power 5 newton per mm. millimeter square. Uh, so it is nothing but uh, 200 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we assume that like, you always the, just remember the 200 GPA. This is an easy way of remembering. For my steel bar, it is nothing but 200 GPA. And then finally, what is the missing term? PL by AE. Okay, we got all the terms. So once you submit everything, uh, you will get a final value. And that will be in terms of, so what will be the final unit here? What will be the unit of strain energy density? Uh, joule per meter cube. Joule per meter cube. And uh, in SI terms, it will be? 
न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर ओरिजिनल एक्सप्रेशन and finally the expert, uh, the value you will be getting will be in terms of newton per meter square like the in si units only and uh, in the exam also or even in assignments also like when you write without unit then it will not be considered like it is not only in assignment like in your real real life also without writing a unit the final answer will not be counted so uh, like even when you are doing practice assignments or even we are doing practicing these problems you should have the habit of writing the units along with the quantities if sometimes you will say like okay 1 meter in your mind it will be there will be meter but it may not be in the paper but you should have a habit of writing the unit along with the uh, magnitude of this quantity uh yeah that's for today anybody have any doubts mm, some reply like either yes or no no sir no sir no sir okay then we will wind up today okay i just need to take uh, okay one more yeah uh, this one other sheet